what happened in 2020? Yeah. Uh, in what ways did any of that change? Yeah, and just as everybody uh, looks, you know, there's this tension I see in, in the year 2020. Uh, I, I read a, a joke and it said, you know, that, that 2020 was the worst year ever if you've never lived at any other time in the world. Uh, in in history and being a historian, that's really true. Yeah. Um, But it really was, so that's, uh, you know, the joking part, oh, it really wasn't that bad. But on the other hand, there was some some pretty significant difficulties, Um, not only with uh, COVID and people getting it and family members having significant um, uh, sickness as as well as death, um, but it it changed uh, what we did. And so what we did, uh, when the f- state first shut down, is uh, we went into our small group, which we call home group meetings. And the first week, I think it was March 15th, if that was a Sunday, um, we actually met in person because we didn't know how widespread this was. And so we met in, we have seven functioning home groups, but we met in nine specific groups for that week. And so two of those were large extended families that broke out. Okay. <clears throat> and then the other seven uh, were our uh, usual home groups. And then after that, um, we continued to rely on those home group leaders and those home group meetings to be our church and our community. And they met on Sundays and they met on Wednesdays. The, we did make some changes, um, and one of those was I would record and send out a weekly encouragement, uh, kind of a sermonette, uh, much shorter, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, to kind of focus each of the groups, hey, this is what we're praying for, this is what we're um, dealing with, but the, that Zoom technology allowed us to continue the interaction which became, which was really, you know, we came together, it was uh, par for the course, it wasn't that difficult to do. It became really intentional. And, and that's where that word in, in Acts 2, devoted, really became important. We say intentional today, but we recognized that we really needed to be intentional with that. And so you really leveraged your home groups yeah. effectively divided into nine smaller churches. Yes. Um, but what did you do to stay connected? You were doing the videos of a message each yes. week that then got distributed to everybody and you right. were using Zoom yes. somehow to connect all those groups together? Right. Yeah, and what that did was it continued. There's great teaching out there. Uh, and in fact, one of the things that 2020 did is I've gotten to listen to Lafayette Community Church, and I've gotten to listen to River City, and, and I've been able to tune in to all of the great teaching that's out there, and there's great worship. You can go on YouTube and, and find a great worship set, probably better than any of us can do, although you're good on guitar. Uh. <laughs> um, and so there's great worship, but the part that we didn't want to let go of was, how are you doing? How are you handling quarantine? How are you, you know, what are the job situations in in each of the groups? And so those kinds of conversations and caring for one another uh, and praying for one another took place in those Zoom meetings. And then those home group uh, leaders were in communication with me or one of the other elders. And so that was kind of the communication uh, guideline between that. The elders continued to meet. And so we did, the elders continued to meet in person almost every week. There were a few that we went to Zoom because somebody had been exposed and, and that kind of thing. But uh, we were able to meet distanced and, and with masks and in, a, and in a smart way, but still be able uh, to keep our core leadership meeting with one another. Um, and then the other really important thing that we did was we had a meeting early on where we gathered all of those leaders, which nine group, little churches, it was actually 25 or 30 people because uh, we, hus- we had husband and wife and then they had a co-leader. Mm. But we gathered all together and we really w- just went through our directory and we said, we want to make sure everybody is at least being contacted and that we're caring for our, our flock at that point. So that was a really important meeting. Excellent, excellent. Um, 
So that's how it all began. How did yeah. it develop through the year? What changes yeah. did you make as things went on? So that, ha that, that went on until the last weekend in May. And in the last weekend in May, um, we moved to live stream. And um, what had happened be between March and May is different people began to feel different levels of comfort with meeting with, with one another. And actually that really uh, did well that we were in different home groups because it wasn't me or another elder top down saying this is how you have to meet those different home groups were able to make their decisions based on the comfort level of their group. And one of the messages that uh, we spent three or four weeks on was deferring and preferring to one another. And that was really important because if I have a certain held belief and you have a certain held belief, we should be able to coexist with, with one another. And so our home groups were the were the ground where that really, th that discussion took place, but that's where they had the closest relationships. And so those were much more seamless than top down us trying to, to make those decisions for people. So then in um, what live streaming allowed us to do was uh, those who felt comfortable could come back together. We have a large gym sanctuary area that probably holds five or 600 people if pre-2020, if we were all packed in. And so we were able to spread out um, and have uh, what we felt like were safe meetings. It's got high ceilings and it was really, we were, it was the spring and so we were able to open doors wide and we really felt like we were able to do it in a wise way. Um, but only about a third of the people came back hmm. uh, in person and, um, so what we did was uh, we would have our Sunday morning, a, a pretty similar type of a meeting. It was shortened because we didn't, have we didn't have any youth ministry to start off with. And then again, we relied on that midweek home group meeting to touch everybody and to talk with everybody and to check up and to make sure their, their uh, people were being cared for. And so that's what we went to uh, in May, and we've continued to do that. We're probably at, um, I would say, half or probably over half of the people are now coming on a Sunday morning, but we still are really relying on those home groups. Some of them are still meeting in Zoom. Some of them are meeting in person. Some of them are sharing meals together. So there's a real difference of how comfortable people are but we want to give that kind of freedom to those individual groups. Mm 